So, hi, Julian. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. Uh, so, we are here today to discuss about um, Tinnitus Pathway, about uh, your experience with Tinnitus, and how you convert this experience, uh, which was obviously like a negative, to a really positive and uh, a force in your life, because you're now a practitioner also. Uh, helping people suffering from tinnitus, right? And if I understand correctly now, do you have tinnitus? Um, no, I don't have it anymore, but tinnitus started when I was 16 and it just gradually got worse and worse until my mid thirties. Um, I'd had it sort of maybe 17, 18 years. It was really, really loud. And it got so loud that I couldn't work and I couldn't sleep. Um, it was very, very extreme. And I'd visited a few doctors along the way, and most of them have said, there's nothing you can do about this. Just learn to live with it. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I went to see a ear, nose and throat specialist um, after 20 years of tinnitus. And wow. it was really, really very, very bad. And, um, and I waited six months for an appointment. And... When I went to see him, he said, yes, you're moderately to severely deaf. You need hearing aids. Um, off you go. Thank you. And I said, well, wait a minute. What about my tinnitus? He said, oh, there's nothing you can do about it. Learn to live with it. Bye. <laughs> and I was so shocked because I was expecting help and um, being told that there was nothing I could do and being told that I had to live with this terrible, terrible noise in my head for the rest of my life was one of the most difficult days of my life. I actually left that uh, meeting in a state of shock. And I can remember sitting in the car and I was just um, thinking, I don't know if I can spend the rest of my life like this. This is terrible. Um, and my tinnitus got a lot worse, actually. And for the next two or three months, I went into a bad depression. But fortunately... It really was a very difficult time. I had um, cranial sacral therapy. I'd never heard of this therapy before. A friend of the family said, I had this cranial sacral therapy and it really relaxed me. Why don't you try it? It might help. And I was desperate. So I thought, right, well, I'll try anything. And I went off and had a session. And it's a very gentle, hands-on treatment. Um, and this guy was working around my head very gently and I felt the tinnitus kind of change tune and it started to sort of go a bit quiet and I said well, how are you doing that what's going on anyway I had this very light treatment and at the end of the session um, I felt incredibly relaxed and I, I don't think I've ever relaxed before in my life this was when I was about 34 years old and I drove home and my tinnitus was changing. And I thought, this is just extraordinary. How is this possible from a light contact like that? So I went back and I had four or five sessions and my tinnitus really started to change. And I was mm -hmm. really shocked, actually, because I had been suffering for 20 years. Yes. Um, and I'd lost my job because I couldn't work or sleep. I was... Um, unemployed at the time because the noise it was just I couldn't hear the telephone ring it was impossible to work and um, I went um, so I was at a crossroads in my life and I thought oh cranial work this sounds interesting and a training course appears and I thought right so I'm going to try this out and I I fell in love with the work and I I started training as a therapist um, and I learned all about the nervous system and how the body works and how the hearing works and everything. Um, and over the, that year of training, my tinnitus came down steadily. Mm. And the following summer, after 20 years of hell, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I had silence for the first time ever, which was a very big shock for me. I remember waking up one summer's morning and I couldn't hear anything. And it was like, oh, this is like a miracle. It really was like a miracle for me. So 
um, I carried on training. I did my practice, set up a practice mm -hmm. um, in 2000. I qualified and, and ever since I've had a very busy practice helping people with tinnitus. So I do body work uh, mainly with tinnitus. And I started getting quite good results with cranial sacral therapy. And then I trained as a psychotherapist. And so I learned how to work with people's trauma and difficulties and to work more long term with people. Mm -hmm. In psychotherapy, you see people once a week for years. So you get to know your clients very, very well, very deeply. Um, and after getting a few years of good results, I started sharing my information on YouTube because I thought, well, if I can get better and I'm helping other pe people get better, why not share the information? Mm. So I just put YouTube videos out. Um, um, stop telling people there's no cure for tinnitus. It's not helpful. It damages people. You can actually get better. And then I started sharing some of the techniques, the body-based focusing techniques, mm -hmm. getting therapies to release the sit nervous system and bring people out of fight or flight. This is what I learned. Mm -hmm. that our hearing becomes very activated and turns yeah. into a radar listening out far too sensitively for danger if we feel afraid or overwhelmed. And so your hearing becomes so switched on, you end up hearing the buzz of your central nervous system. That's what tinnitus is. You're hearing the brain buzz. Um, and so I learned that if you relax people and get people to switch off, the adrenaline, the adrenaline level comes down and the hypervigilant hearing comes down. It switches off. And your ears can reset themselves and come back into well-being, which is where your hearing can rest in screen save mode. It can be very focused and it can switch off and ignore most of the background sound in the body and around you. And body-based therapies combined with understanding how this works help people's fear levels come down and teaching people how to calm and self-soothe and settle the nervous system with body practice mm -hmm. really helps the nervous system change. Hearing's very changeable. It can be very alert and it can switch off. So the YouTube videos have started explaining how I was helping people with tinnitus. Um, and they became quite popular and people all over the world were watching them and people started learning about how this this changeable condition works and they start to realize that calming the nervous system down shifting the focus away from the hearing and getting people to really settle and come out of red alert mm -hmm. helps tinnitus quieten down so i started getting lots of emails from people saying, oh, God, I watched your videos, and it all makes so much sense. And while I was watching your video, my tinnitus went quiet. Oh, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, good, I'm pleased it's calming down, but it's not amazing. This is your nervous system feeling safe, your, your auditory mm -hmm. system coming out of fight or flight and settling, and this is what therapists help you achieve, and this mm -hmm. is what meditation, yoga, tai chi, massage, yeah. well-being, yeah. this is what, what helps it change. And so um, I ended up writing a book, um, Tinnitus from Tyrant to Friend, um, here or um, in French, Liz. And in Liz. French. <laughs> yeah. friend une tyrannie à une amitié. Une amitié. Right. That's, that's in on Amazon. Um, and this, this, it explains the pathway from going from stuck, where you think, oh, I'm never going to get out of tinnitus, to mm -hmm. being free of tinnitus. And when you get up over this line, you, you're kind of learning what makes tinnitus better, what makes it worse. And above mm -hmm. this line is, I know what helps now. I stay with this and I know it's going to get better. 
and the, the the symptoms come down with with good understanding and body practice and good therapeutic support these things really help people feel safe and settle and what's great about the youtube is that it people can read other people's comments and yes so what i've done the next phase of having this book is i've created an app um called quieten um so it, yeah if you, it's a little quiet in the app here yep. and and when you open up the app you've got um you've got the, the same matrix but it's like um, a training program so people who are stuck they can open up videos here and they can learn about tinnitus why we get tinnitus what helps it get better and worse and then and then there are lots of techniques um on how to physically help your nervous system settle. So in a way, the app called Quieten is helping make the book a, a real lived experience with therapeutic support, question and answer sessions, very practical, practical techniques that people mm -hmm. can do every day. Um, I get people to do face massages, lots of yawning, focusing on centering themselves, how to release tension with tapping, all sorts of things. And this very practical side actually gets people to feel more relaxed, more settled, and it distracts the focus mm -hmm. away from the ringing, which is really helpful. And so it's quite a practical body-based approach to tinnitus. A lot of tinnitus people tend to be very heady and the focus is up and out. Yes. The senses are going bananas and <gasps> lots of thinking, lots of anxiety, um, lots of fear, lots of adrenaline. Mm -hmm. And so switching it off, bringing the focus back in and mm -hmm. down and getting the whole system to, to settle really helps the alarm bells mm -hmm. stop ringing. Yeah, it's, it's a remark I found uh, very often about this uh, practice and uh, approach. Uh, on internet, people are very, very sceptic about uh, this approach. But, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm an engineer and a neuroscientist uh, researcher. Uh, so, and I just realized that most of the research came out the last 10 years. So it's really recent. And uh, for instance, uh, mindfulness stress-based reduction. 20 years ago, it was done in few hospitals. And it was like we were considering uh, the, uh, the practitioner and the doctors that were doing that crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, some kind of uh, weird guys uh, mm -hmm. like uh, that were just doing that for the people that are in the corridor of death, you know? Mm -hmm. So we were not caring, but we were sceptic. And now more and more the research show that actually uh, in many, many situations, when you, you, you explain that with a... Um, fight or flight response. So we are, you are really stressed. Actually, I can simplify that. If you, if you ringing, bring you negative emotion, mm -hmm. your brain cannot accept it. Mm -hmm. And emotion, while we are not controlling that by default, because it's generated, we have a prefrontal cortex, which has the ability to inhibit this mm -hmm. response. That means that you can still feel emotion, but the emotion doesn't control you after some point if you train like a muscle, your prefrontal cortex to inhibit. And when you reach that point, then the stimuli, so the ringing is there, mm -hmm. but you don't feel immediately the stress and the panic. Mm -hmm. And then the brain can start to do the work and forget about this. Yeah, and that the, the prefrontal cortex uh, part of the brain is is where we can become very aware of what's going on in our yes. mind and very aware of what's going on in the body. So we can start to witness what's happening. So instead of getting lost in terrifying mm -hmm. thoughts and being hijacked by catastrophic thinking, we can start to watch the thinking. We can start to hang out in grounded body-based experience and especially um, 
comforting and soothing the nervous system can help the nervousness calm down. So hands-on therapies are directly very, very good at calming and settling people. So, you know, it's, it's brilliant that mindfulness um, ha has become much more mainstream mm -hmm. over the last 10, 20 years. You know, if you're a Buddhist practitioner, you do meditation practice, it's kind of day one, you know, mind just yes. mindfulness, you know, mindfulness of the body. As therapists, we, we learn how to calm and settle people down and to help them feel safe. Mm -hmm. Talking therapies and developing awareness and cultivating a sense of well-being in the nervous system helps the, these senses settle. Mm -hmm. So for us, this is everyday bread and butter stuff, very ordinary everyday stuff, but it has huge impacts on stress-related symptoms like tinnitus. So it's very helpful to understand this is possible, to learn mm -hmm. how to calm and self-soothe, um, and learn how to distract away from hearing so that your, your, your hearing mm -hmm. can reset itself when, you're, when you stop reacting yes. to it or fiddling around with it. In a way, we need to leave our ears alone so that they can mm -hmm. reset themselves. Um, but just, I have a question for you because um, still we know that there are different kind of tinnitus. And for instance, there is pure satire tinnitus mm -hmm. and this is among the kind of tinnitus that's getting this habituation process in the brain. It's most the hardest because you have a modulation with you know heart rate, act, mm -hmm. uh, physical activity. So every exercise are actually working against you because if you work with your body, then the body is increasing or changing your tinnitus, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and not in the opposite way that in subjective tinnitus. So um, just one question, uh, are, there, are your approach still working for, let's say, pulsatile tinnitus? Yeah, yeah. Yes. so, so um, with pulsatile tinnitus, you end up being so mm -hmm. alert, you hear the cardiac pulse inside the head. This yes. is happening all the time, mm -hmm. but normally your brain filters this out. So when you do body work and you do cranial work, you ease and release the tightness of the structures. You do a lot of work mm -hmm. around the head area with cranial work. Um, <clears throat> and that can cause the physical pressure to release, the tightness and the constriction to relax. And this can be very beneficial for that arterial pulse that's really built up with stress and adrenaline. So you can physically release this with body work. And when the nervous system, this is always true, when the nervous system feels safe, mm -hmm. when you're not in that alert state, when you come out of um, fight or flight, the brain stops monitoring all these background noises. Yes. The arterial pulse, which is always there, mm -hmm. gets filtered out. Most people hear their arterial pulse because mm -hmm. the brain is tracking it too much. Just like many people with tinnitus can't stand the sound of a fridge in the kitchen. For yes. many, they never thought about it. It didn't matter. But when mm -hmm. you're in that alert state, the sound of a fridge yeah. can drive really you crazy. Yeah, I um, changed my fridge, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but, but the problem is the alertness. So when 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 yeah. your nervous system alertness changes, yeah. then you can have any fridge um, yeah. because it doesn't matter anymore. It's just just bzz, it doesn't. Yeah. Who cares? So in some ways, it doesn't matter if the tinnitus is cardiac pulse or it's from a car crash mm -hmm. or from loud noise exposure or some. Mm -hmm some gamma knife surgery accident or whatever it's useful to know how the tinnitus started but in the long term getting better is when your brain stops monitoring it and switches off mm -hmm. it stops tracking it um it's like the the internal sensitivity that comes right down and the brain filters it out of your awareness again if yes. it's pulsatile or if it's um, high-pitched, mm -hmm. constant hiss. And just a question, because um, I have, um, you know, uh, on our app, we have plenty of people that try, for instance, uh, in France, we have sophrology. Okay, so it's 
the practitioners that have all these toolbox about stress reduction and there is a bit of psychological uh, psychotherapy there is a bit of uh, uh, for instance uh, uh, TRT, uh, tinnitus retraining therapy for the people that use this approach. But uh, a common um, remark is um, after five, six sessions, it's cost a lot of money and mm -hmm. I don't get results. Mm -hmm. So people also get very frustrated mm -hmm. because let's say, yeah, I understand. Uh, you pay every week like uh, 50, 70 euro. It's a lot of money for some, some people. Mm -hmm. And then after two, three months, nothing mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. So on, on your side, from what you experience, what is the expected time frame to get mm -hmm. results? Mm -hmm. And how do you yeah. advise uh, people that went to a practitioner, nothing happens? Should mm -hmm. you change practitioner? Should they pursue mm -hmm. uh, progress? Well, it's, a really good, it's a really good question. I think, um, I think realistically, we're looking for you know, six months to to feel a really significant change in symptoms, you need to find a good practitioner, somebody you like, somebody you trust, and you need to feel clear benefits. So the minimum at the end of the session, oh, you feel very relaxed. You feel mm -hmm. like you've switched off. You're not racing in your head. You're just very, you've gone into that lovely, neutral, calm state. I think that's mm -hmm. minimum. Um, and Yes, it is. It, it is expensive. It's an investment in one's health, but one's health is very important. So what I usually say to people is have a weekly hands on session with a good therapist. It needs mm -hmm. minimum to relax you and switch you off. Find somebody who works for you. I like cranial sacral therapy because it helped me enormously. But reflexology, <coughs> um, shiatsu, acupuncture there are many different things that can be fantastic mm -hmm. but then i ask people to um, learn a practice so like tai chi or yoga in my app and quiet and i've got yoga i've got many many practices that people can try out where they learn to self-soothe and calm and settle their own nervous system and they take responsibility for their own self yes so you have your therapist helping you and then mm -hmm. clients start monitoring their own levels of activation or calm and they start to realize that they can do a lot to help themselves too. So if you have one therapy session a week and you have a yoga class a week and, and you practice yoga mm -hmm. and every night you do the evening face massage or you do some of the practices on the app, then you're going to get steady results. Um, one, one hour a week with a therapist may not be enough. Most people have to learn how to train their mind away from the hearing by doing practices, and they need to learn to self-soothe. So on my app, there are lots and lots of practices, mm -hmm. and I encourage people to, to do quite a lot, maybe half an hour to an hour every day, where they're learning to settle the system and shift their attention mm -hmm. away from tinnitus. I think if people are committed and they are prepared to do the work, prepared to ground themselves, settle their nervous system, then you know you can get steady progress taking place in a few weeks. You know, if people put the effort in and they work on themselves. You can go from maybe a, a seven out of 10. Most people have a range. They go between yes. five and seven mm. out of 10. And then after mm. a couple of months, drops between a two and a three out of 10. After six months, maybe zeros and ones. And that's good progress. That's steady mm. improvement. But it takes a bit of commitment, working on the self, understanding how this works. Um, I think that combination um, is one of the quickest ways of getting better. You know, yes. in three months, you should know quite a bit. You should see a big difference in your symptoms. In six mm -hmm. months, it, it should be very obviously better. And so you developed your own app. And I saw there is plenty of video and some of them are free, right? So mm -hmm. you can still access it even uh, 
if you yeah, have no money. Over half of the app is free. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, just because I put a lot of work into this, I've done maybe yes. 200 videos, so, you know, it takes a lot of time and effort to mm -hmm. put it together. So it's, um, there's, there's a payment side of the app to open up everything, but it's a way of just um, helping pay for the app. and the running Yeah, yeah of it. course. Um, and um, and I have question and answer sessions. So there are people who come once every two weeks and we, we, we have interactions that, which are live. Um, I generally have one in the morning and then one in the evening. So Australians and Americans can join at the right time. <laughs> Um, yes. But it's it's um, so it's a very sort of therapeutic app, full of practical um, techniques and hard-earned experience, actually. And lots of questions like, "How do I cope when I get home at night or um, yes. to a quiet house?" Or I tried to answer all the questions that I hear over the years and put them in short three three-minute video answers. So a lot of people. If they wake up in the middle of the night and they're terrified, they go to the app and they find it very reassuring. And actually they learn a lot about it and they and it helps them settle. Um, so it you know it, it can be really, really useful. Yeah, okay. So thank you very much. I, I mean, uh, there are so few solutions like this with the real people behind. Mm -hmm. and uh, that we get feedback from uh, the user we discuss with that they really like your work not only because you're taking care of them but because you are there and I think that's the a, a, a biggest uh, thing that there is not enough human in the pathway to recovery mm -hmm. so when you see the doctor <clears throat> he has maybe 5 to 10 minutes to talk to you mm -hmm. if he listens to you and then you're thrown away for the next session, maybe in a few months, right? Mm -hmm. And you cannot replicate yourself times one million people. Yeah, exactly. So, so uh, app uh, uh, today we are so lucky to have these tools, uh, mm -hmm. these tools today, mm -hmm. because we can replicate your knowledge mm -hmm. almost at infinite scale and almost for free, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, and, and, and the app is like um, an ongoing therapy session. You know, I've actually had a few people come and visit me and they said, look, I found your app um, and I've, I've, it really has helped me. I was in a very dark place last month and, you know, eight weeks later, I'm kind of um, yeah. feeling so much better. Thank you very much because it's very practical. It is a, a very human experience. I've been from one end one extreme to the other with this condition. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so I really relate to a lot of people's experiences directly. Yeah, and I think what is missing everywhere and you have on your app is this. So you show positive stories in videos about the people that uh, went through it. And uh, this is clearly something which is lacking on the internet for a good reason is because when you get better, you tend to not look backward mm -hmm. and just continue life, you're right? Mm -hmm. But you forget about all these people that have been the same place as you when you started yeah. and they just need a little push and a bit of hope. Yes. So <laughs> tremendously helpful. I'm glad you mentioned that. I mean, on, on the positive story section, there's a yeah. um, positive feedback here and, and there yeah. are um, hundreds of paragraphs from people writing in saying mm -hmm. it was terrible before and now I've got back down to zero. It's really important for people to know it's not just me getting better. Yes. Well-trodden path and many people get better. And if you go online, you only see the suffering and the dark stuff, which is just horrendous. All the people that get better don't talk about it online. They just move on with their lives. So, so, so hearing positive stories and having a long, long list of people saying it was dreadful and now I'm better, it really encourages people to follow the same path. And it's very reassuring and it helps people feel safe because they then see that this is actually a very changeable feast. So when we get exposed to health practitioners who don't have a clue how to help tinnitus and 
these people say there's nothing you can do yes learn to live with it these people are saying i can't help you and i don't understand so when people say this just say thank you very much goodbye mm. and and learn from people who have got better um mm -hmm. and be inspired by many people's stories of getting better mm -hmm. um you know it's i really want to leave you that, with this concept that hearing is very changeable and what gets the hearing sensitivity to calm down what stops the alarm bells from ringing is feeling safe and feeling safe and calm oh, and in that body-based sense of oh, you know well-being inside feeling relaxed it's much more than relaxed that directly helps us settle and body-based therapies i think and meditation, awareness practices, yoga, tai chi, all these things help you get there. Okay, so thank you very much, Julian, for uh, all uh, this sharing. Uh, uh, quick last word, what are the next steps for you? Uh, how do you vision um, the pathway for the future tinnitus uh, uh, sufferer? I would how can like we change? To, I'd love to... To give, to give talks to ear, nose, and throat people. I'd mm -hmm. love audiologists and ENTs to learn how to help people with this. You know, an ENT surgeon is a surgeon. These are experts at providing, mm -hmm. you know, putting cochlear implants. They're amazing at what they do, but they're not therapists. And then, the, you know, referring people to therapists who can help, I think, is going to be... A really valuable thing instead of saying nothing you can do i think if if we can educate ear nose and throat people audiologists already have a very good understanding that this is a changeable feast and and direct them to therapists who really can help that's what i'd like to do next okay so let's uh, continue uh, on on your great work and we hope to help you uh, with that so on, on our side, um, if you think this video, I will share also um, a link for uh, the app of uh, Julian. Um, and I mean, his YouTube channel also, uh, great work here. Uh, most <laughs> YouTube is completely free. So it's amazing to have uh, all of this accessible on the internet. Mm -hmm. And on our side, if you have uh, tennis yourself and you try different stuff, uh, please also you can download our app and share your document, your journey. Why? Because documented your journey will help us later on help other people with the same symptoms like you and similarity. So, and especially if you get better, document your journey when you get better. Now, now you don't need to think about it, but if you documented that and it's there on the internet, it's available, a new <laughs> thing to suffer, which is exactly like you, who just find, oh, this guy recovered 10 years ago. I'm exactly like him. So maybe I can try what worked for him. Especially because... when, when you get better, not if you get better. Yeah, yeah. When, no, when but... you get better. <laughs> <laughs> I, I put, I, I put uh, uh, just uh, a quick, because I know that it's difficult. And I know, and I, I don't want to, uh, I want to say a word because still the first, one of the first cause of mo uh, mortality for people with stint is suicide. And and you you have to, we have to to look at this into the eyes and not forget about this because a lot of people are deciding to stop believing in getting better. Mm -hmm. Then they decide to stop everything, and so yeah, uh, you will get better, but you need sometimes we need very help and we are there. <laughs> uh, Julian is there, and if it doesn't work, maybe find someone else. But get some help. It's mm -hmm. really important. Okay, yeah. and it will get better. Yeah, you, you know, just don't panic and build up your support network, get practicing, get working yeah. on yourself to settle. And just, you know, for people who go into that very dark place, the first port of call is knowing you can get better and getting help to settle and come back into some sense of oh, just getting help to relax, switch off, feel some comfort somewhere. Yes. And then when you come <clears throat> when you come back into a more manageable state, you can start, you get on the track to recovery. It's a well-trodden yes. path. So 
yeah i i always i work <clears throat> i work with many people who go into that dark place and i'm extremely mm. pleased to report that they make a really good recovery you can read them in the positive stories okay Thank you very much, uh, Julian, and uh, Thanks, try quiet and dap. And uh, so we meet uh, you soon to discuss about yeah. those topics. Yes, I look forward to working. Thank you. With you. Thank you. Uh, so.